1767, the border between New York and New Jersey was established, and a map was created to show the border. And the reason for the map was uh, numerous reasons. Uh, people were investing in land, uh, political tax reasons. Uh, and so the map was created. It was called the Faden Map. And at the outbreak of the American Revolution, there was a need for military maps. And the Faden Map was used. It was the principal map used by both the British and the Americans during the Revolutionary War. So if you could picture George Washington surrounded by his officers and planning some strategic move in New Jersey, he was using that map, as were the British. And what they did, the map that uh, I showed you is dated 1777. They kept revising the date of the map for business, for commercial reasons. Even back then, there was a little capitalism at work. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. And what, why the map also becomes important and why all these maps are important is that people in England had family or friends fighting in the war in America. And so they would read a letter or perhaps a newspaper account of something that happened in Morristown, New Jersey. Well, they had no idea what this was. So these maps were sold, very actively sold, to people who wanted to follow the events of the war, just like we would do today in Afghanistan or some other place in the world. People hear about Yorktown. They hear about the Battle of New York. Yeah. They hear about Valley Forge. But New Jersey became the crossroad of the American Revolution. Yes. Washington, by some accounts, spent almost, what, 80% of his time yes, I've in seen the Garden that State? Yes. And some, what, 300 military skirmishes here? Well, I can't focus on the military skirmishes, but some of the principal battles and events of the American Revolution took place in New Jersey. We just haven't been very good at publicizing it. And even historians, because of the popularity of a site like Yorktown, which has been heavily promoted, they don't focus on events in New Jersey. But we were at the center of the American Revolution. And, and almost at the very beginning, too, because it was through New Jersey that, that General Washington made his, his escape retreat. and retreat. Yeah, the subject Through of my first Fort, book. Fort, absolutely. <laughs> Fort Lee, Englewood, Teaneck, places yes, like that. absolutely. You can follow the route. And unfortunately, it's, everything has been modernized. It's a very sad situation. But you can still follow the route and understand it. How many and, men did he have with him at that time? Well, it's interesting because Washington was instructed by the Continental Congress to defend the city of New York, which was a disaster. And Washington loses the city of New York. He's chased by the British into Westchester County, eventually crosses into New Jersey. He's holding two forts in Upper Manhattan, Fort Washington on Upper Manhattan and Fort Lee in New Jersey. The British overrun Fort Washington in four hours. The Americans lose almost 3,000 men in valuable artillery and, and uh, equipment. Four days later, the British climb the Hudson Palisades. This would be November 20th, 1776. That's up towards the Alpine area. They, yeah. But they came up about six mm -hmm. miles north of the George Washington Bridge. Mm -hmm. And their objective was actually not Fort Lee. Um, what they wanted was the Hackensack River Valley, which was called the Garden of America. Why was that important? Because they needed the food. They were bringing everything from England. They had pieces of Long Island, but they wanted those farms. How close was Washington to getting caught as he was making uh, his retreat? It's interesting. During the retreat, which lasted about two and a half weeks, it was said that as Washington's army was leaving Newark to the south and headed down towards Rollway, the British were coming into Newark from the north. But while it sounds like they were 10 minutes apart, the Americans had a tenacious rear guard, a very dangerous rear guard. They were using rifles, these frontier weapons, which could fire at long range 400 yards. And the Americans, for the first time in modern warfare, it, we still don't know it was officially condoned, but they were shooting to kill the officers. And this was unknown up to this time. This was, was an Indian tactic. Was it, was it I mean, I guess, as some may call it now, 
uh, a terror tactic to terrorize the troops, or was it de uh, decapitation, as we might call it now, to uh, get the leadership cut off? This was an Indian tactic that they learned from the Indians, and Washington was a frontier fighter. I don't believe that he ever uh, acknowledged or condoned the purposeful aiming at officers, but the Americans were doing it nonetheless because some of these riflemen were coming out of the frontier, and this was the tactic that they used. Was it effective? Absolutely, yes. At Landing Lane Bridge in Piscataway, uh, a rifleman picked off a Hessian, a German officer, a mounted officer at over 400 yards and shot him and killed him off the horse. This was unbelievable that a weapon could have this range. You know, we could tick off the battles yeah. uh, from Fort Lee, the 10 crucial days. Yes. The Battle of Millstone. It was Van Ness, was that a... The, the Van, I believe, well, that would be the American retreat right. after the Battle of Princeton, Washington camp the first night in Millstone, New Jersey, and at the house, I, I don't want to, I believe the name of the house is the Van Dorn House, Van which Dorn. is still standing, privately owned. And then battles at, at Boundbrook. I mean, yes. It goes on and on. Short Hills, yes. Monmouth, Paulus, Absolutely. Hook, yep. uh, Connecticut Farms, and Springfield as yes. well. This, yes. The state was really... A uh, hotbed of military activity. And, and it was the place where Washington ultimately kind of turned it all around, too, when he crossed the yep. Delaware. Yes, he did when he crossed the Delaware. That's the, his attack on Trenton. That was the crucial moment where he attacked the German mercenaries at Trenton and defeated them. Then he, and it's a complicated story, he recrossed the Delaware and then encouraged by the raising of the New Jersey militia, he returned, occupied Trenton. Cornwallis was coming up from Princeton to bag him. They called it bagging the fox. And on, on the night of January the 2nd, Washington took a remote farm road and attacked the British troops at Princeton, defeated them. And if his army was fresh, he would have gone down the King's Highway, Route 27, if you would, to New Brunswick to capture the commissary and the, the, um, the equipment that was in New Brunswick. But his plan was ultimately to go to Morristown. And you can see that on the faded map, the Mar Morristown was surrounded by heavy woods. It was up on a high plateau. There was a lot of patriotism there, and the British couldn't get him. And he liked to operate out of Morristown. He also liked to operate out of the Watchung Mountains, just above Boundbrook. So when we travel throughout this state, oh, we, yeah. we don't realize the footsteps that we're walking yes. in. Yep. But as a country, yep. on this 4th of July, much of what we celebrate yeah. now and much of what we take for granted is a result of what happened yeah. in this state. You know, Mike, if you drive on the Newark Bay Extension and you get up there and you look down and you see Newark and you look behind Newark, you see what they call the Blue Hills or the Blue Mountains or the Watchungs. Washington stayed up in those mountains. And those mountains run from almost from Princeton up to the New York state line. Well, if they were good enough for him, they're yes. good enough for us. Mr. Lefkowitz, thanks so much well, for coming on Well, thank you for having me, And Mike. a happy 4th to you, sir. A happy 4th of July to you. Thank you.